welcome to Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realm Smith. I am your host and painter, uh, Jason Azevedo, and I'm so glad to be here tonight. Uh, we haven't done a live uh, tutorial in a little while, so I wanted to make sure that we did that today um, because I miss you guys, and I wanted to make sure that we got uh, a live painting done. Tonight, we are going to be painting the Tabaxi Rogue uh, from WizKids. Um, and, uh, I don't actually have it here. <laughs> One sec. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to have my son actually grab it for me because I took it in the other room and then I didn't bring it back. So that is live, folks. Thank you for making us your preferred entertainment experience during this, um, craziness that we call life. Hope everyone is staying safe. Um, I am in the chat, so just uh, if you, we are answering questions. Can you get me the mini that I'm painting today? It's the rogue character I took in there, the glue, I think, it's somewhere in there, I hope, because I've lost it. Um, thank you, son. Uh, I am in the chat, so if you guys have any questions or anything, please make sure that you ask them as we go on here. Uh, just make sure that you write question. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Ethan. Oh, jeez. Got it. <laughs> Tabaxi Rogue. Very excited. And actually, this uh, Tabaxi Rogue is going to be three earrings from... Our oh sorry that is not good that is very not good. Um, this is three earrings from our uh, Tides of Wildmount campaign, so she is going to stand in for the captain of the ship, the Wave Chaser, which is part of our current um, campaign that we're running, uh, which like I said is called Tides of Wildmount, which follows the Explorer's Guide to Wildmount campaign. Want to thank our sponsors, of course, uh, Dungeons and Dragons for having us on their channel as always. And Vallejo for helping us to make this happen, uh, and the awesome painting. And WizKids for all the incredible miniatures uh, that we paint on a weekly basis. It's always so fun, uh, and we love having the partners that we have. Uh, they are wonderful people, and it's such a dream come true to be able to do what we do. Uh, that was just in time. If you enjoy what you're seeing tonight, uh, if you hit the follow or subscribe, um, this little potion bottle will go off. Purple for followers, blue for subscriptions and bits. So we want to thank you ahead of time. Uh, definitely consider making us your preferred, um, uh, sorry, your Twitch Prime uh, subscription because that helps us do what we do. It takes resources to do this on a weekly basis and we want to continue to bring you as much content as possible as we move on. Um, we're going to jump right in to this as soon as possible. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kybird and Sakura. Um, Cirque again. I see some new names here. Um, Tam Good. Hey, how's it going? And then on the D&D side, DC Lacerra as always. Trobe19 is over there as well. Um, but uh, just love that you guys are here, and I'm super excited to have you all involved. Again, if you have a question, write question in caps and then the question because this the chat goes by fairly quickly and I want to make sure that I'm catching all of the all of the questions that you guys have throughout the evening uh, as that is a really important part of what we do is just maintaining that interactive kind of fun style. I've also kept the D&D Beyond overlay um, up on the screen here um, so that when you roll over the um, when you roll over the window, the video window, you'll see the characters from our campaign. Because tonight we are painting uh, one of the NPCs that will be appearing in tomorrow night's episode and has been appearing up to this point. So we're super pumped about that. Sorry, I'm just a little behind on getting all of this set up. All right, here we go. Ah. <sighs> All right, first of all, tools of the trade. As usual, we need the WizKids Mini, which in this case is the Tabaxi Rogue miniature by WizKids. It's a D&D &D mini. Uh, really, really cool, awesome little miniature uh, it is. Vallejo brushes. I am using a one, a two, and a zero, as well as a dry brush. Got a water pot for mixing uh, and water into my paints to dilute them, as well as clean them. Paper towel for dry brushing and cleaning your paints, as well as a paint palette for mixing your paints and holding them 
as usual. Paint list is a bit long today. Uh, these little minis often take more paints in order to complete them. Um, but we have heavy sienna, black wash, leather brown, bone white, sepia wash, heavy blue gray, cold gray, gun metal, heavy blue, magic blue, off white, glorious gold, and rosy flesh. Uh, as usual too, we up upload the VOD versions of these to our YouTube page. So if you'd like to kind of follow along with those, uh, you can access those on our YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash realmsmith. Uh, and you will be able to kind of be kept uh, in the loop uh, on, on all that stuff and make sure that you subscribe there as well tomorrow night, like I said. And as I'm telling you this, I'm just going to zoom this camera in a little bit. But um, on Monday night, tomorrow night is episode number three, four. Number four of our uh, Tides of Wildmount ca campaign. That is our um, current Wildmount campaign. Um, and that is at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Thank you. That's a bit better. Uh, and then you can see the little potion bottle. And then on Tuesdays, we have Behind the Screen, which is your opportunity to kind of have a spoilerific uh chat with me Q&A session on Twitch where I kind of give you a bit of a behind the screen look at what we do here at Realm Smith on a on a weekly basis uh, about episode questions that you might have why I did certain things about in, or into the mist campaign or about Realm Smith in general uh, we're really excited to have everyone uh, involved in that uh, question already. Oh, snap. I think it's Snap Daddy, I'm assuming. Uh, the Vallejo paints that come in the box are the game color paints or a mix of different types. In our, uh, in our regular boxes, they are uh, Vallejo game color paints. Um, those are the ones that come in our adventure boxes. And if you're interested, thank you for reminding me, in our adventure boxes, we send uh, a box that... Um, Basically, is an adventure in a box every month to your doorstep for, with everything you need in order to run your own adventure. Um, and it is a adventure that is written by the Realmsmith team, uh, curated by me uh, and the team. And uh, you can check that out at realmsmith.tv. And you can use the promo code I Want Adventure to get twenty dollars off your first box. So thank you for that reminder as well. Uh, I think that is all the announcements that we have right now. Uh, question, do you normally just use the one, two, and zero brushes only, or does it vary by miniature? Definitely varies by miniature, Corey. Sometimes I'll use a larger brush when I'm, when I'm painting the large miniatures for base coating and dry brushing, just because these smaller brushes take way too long. We only have two hours to do these um, on, a, on a weekly basis. Um, I'll answer this one question, and then we'll get going. Uh, are the Vallejo paints, this is from Ketamari, Ketmatari, a regular on our on our channel uh, question are the Vallejo paints v, uh, Vallejo model color how do they compare with game color uh, yeah so I'll explain that as I start to start I think we're gonna go with heavy blue uh, because all of the clothing on this miniature is going to be a blue color um, and as a rule of thumb when I'm painting a miniature work from the inside out which means work in the deepest kind of features first out to the most, the highest features on the miniature. It's just easier that way and saves you a lot of heartache um, in the long run. So we are gonna use heavy blue. Heavy blue is an extra opaque paint uh, and it will go on in one coat. Uh, it's kind of a base paint that you would find in any other kind of color line. Also a little shout out to uh, Sirenscape, who is the main title sponsor of our um, season of Tides of Wildmount. And um, we're playing High Seas sound set right now, um, which I am using a lot of in our Tides of Wild Mount campaign. So check that out. I've got lots of different options here, lots of really cool things. You know, if thunder is on the horizon, you get thunder. That was loud. <laughs> Hope that didn't scare anybody watching. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's great. I love Sirenscape. Uh, awesome. Hello, Wolfie Girl. Wanted to just say hello. It just told me, say hello to Wolfie Girl, and I, and I just did. Thank you, Twitch, for letting me know. All right. Uh, Vallejo paints. Uh, so the, the way that uh, model color differs from game color. Model color was intended and is designed for kind of historical painting. 
so that is um, kind of like World War II, uh, dust, that kind of stuff. Um, a lot more kind of realistic colors. Um, so if you're into like old school um, historical gaming, ga a model color is probably the, the, the set for you or the, the paint line for you from, from Vallejo. Uh, but the game color line is a lot more fantasy-based colors, a lot more vibrant colors. Um, so if you're doing war gaming or tabletop gaming, D and D, uh, I would definitely suggest game color over model color, uh, for those purposes. That is how they differ. Uh, on this show, we use all, all game color, um, for our paints. So I'm going heavy blue on the pants. I'm also going to do that on the shirt as well under her armor, um, but Three Earrings is such a cool character, and I wanted to make sure I had an awesome miniature to go with her. <laughs> Sakura says, seagulls are just beach rats, just saying. <laughs> they kind of are, right? It's all good. We can get rid of the... Whenever I've played this sound set before during this stream, we usually use a fireball to, to get rid of the seagulls. It's not nice. It's not nice. It's not a nice thing to say, but really, D&D allows us to do things sometimes that aren't just so nice for the sake of role play, right? Uh, okay, it's our outlet to live vicariously a lot of times. Okay, so pants are done. Now I'm going to go through and do her blouse or her shirt here. And the armor kind of stops mid bicep there. So I'm just going to go around here and paint the sleeves. And that's pretty much the extent of the blue on this mini. Oh, no, what am I saying? Her hood also has blue on it as well. Hope you're all enjoying Tides of Wildmount. Um, we are playing uh, remotely uh, using kind of, uh, we're using Zoom and, and a mix of that in our, and our um, streaming software in order to bring that to you. Can't wait to get back around the table again, but because we don't know when that's gonna be, we wanted to make sure that we continued playing for you. And I know a lot of people have said that watching our Tides of Wildmount campaign is kind of, a little bit like uh, getting Critical Role uh, when Critical Role isn't available because it's in the same world. So it's such a huge honor to hear people say that. Um, and uh, I shared that actually with with Matt Mercer this week, and he um, he was overjoyed with with hearing how how well the the stream's doing, and he was you know kind of it's it's I think it's a bit of a kind of mind-blowing moment for him to have people streaming and playing in his world. Um, I know I know he loves it, so. Just very, very exciting times, even though we're in very difficult times. Oh, I still have Into the Mist every Monday. I totally didn't even change that ad yet. I'm sorry, folks. That should say uh, Tides of Wild Mount, not Into the Mist. I gotta change that for next week, yikes. Behind the ball in that one, Jason. Jeez. Can't forget to change that. Into the Mist was last season. Um, and for those of you that wonder are wondering, Into the Mist will be coming back after Tides of Wildmount season is complete. So we're going back and forth on them. Um, we're taking kind of a seasonal approach, just like a Netflix show would to give people kind of time to catch up, binge, and all of that stuff, give us a bit of a break creatively and be able to do other things. Uh, you know, sometimes you, when you go through and you go, you know, month after month, year after year sort of thing into a campaign, it can get dry or whatever. So we just want to make sure that it's nice and fresh and that all that stuff and, and have opportunities to kind of play in other, in other arenas. So there we go. Hood is done. Shirt is done and um, pants are done. So we're gonna take a break from there and we're gonna go with some leather brown is going to be in our next color. 
Question, was Matt Mercer mad you almost killed Matt at Lillard? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Actually, Matt and I didn't talk about that. Um, we were kind of talking about future stuff, not necessarily present, current uh, kind of stuff that's happening in the stream. Uh, I think he's just happy to be. Oh, thank you very much. That was a, either bits or a subscription. Wow. Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, there it is. Tier one sub. Thank you, Dina Cole. Um, you just gifted a sub. Appreciate that very, very much. You guys are awesome. Oh, man. Dean Nicole just gifted two subs. Wow. Thanks, guys. Um, what size brush are you using for the blue hood, uh, etc.? That is a number two brush from Vallejo. Um, it's a really nice... It's, it's, it's actually quite good for detail, even though it's a little larger. And I'll give it to you size comparison to the miniature. It's actually a fairly large brush. Um, okay, so Leather Brown. I think is going to be next. Leather brown is what I'm going to use for the base of all of the leather bits on three earrings here. I'm just calling her three earrings. She's a tabaxi rogue, so even if you just have a rogue, you can you can use it there too. Um, so we're going to use it for all the leather. So her armor here across her chest, all the belts. We also have heavy sienna to break up some of that leather, so some of the darker leather areas. Um, well, let me just take a look here. I think the armor goes right up to her arms here, her shoulders basically, and right across under her chin. Has anybody else out there painted this miniature already? But I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use the heavy sienna for the shoulder pieces, just to kind of give some darker some darker leather areas as well. I haven't quite decided what I want to use for the knees yet. Uh, in the art, I think it follows the same color as the um, the shoulders, which is a darker leather. So I might go heavy sienna with those. I don't quite know yet, but I'm just basically blocking out all of the leather armor currently. Let's see here. Question, before your question, so Jason can easily see. Oh, DC Lissair was saying, please put question before your question. And I saw a question. I thought it was a question, uh, <laughs> but it wasn't. That's funny. I'd like to know if you guys are all painting lots during this time. Um... That would be really great to know. Oh, I did something here I didn't want to do. Sorry, guys. Give me a sec. Bit of a noob moment there. There we go. Okay. Are you guys doing lots of painting? What are you painting? I'd love to see and hear. Did you mention on a Q and a about starting a cyberpunk campaign? I may have heard wrong. Oh, yes, Gary Diamond. So, um... Oh, and there's another question above, too, that I missed uh, from uh, Dina Cole. Um, but yes, so uh, not that we're starting a campaign. We did a one-shot um, cyberpunk episode for Virtual Gary Con on our channel. You can f still find it on our Twitch. We're going to be uploading it to YouTube soon. Um, but it was run by Mike Pondsmith, who is the creator of cyberpunk, the old cyberpunk um, role-playing game from the 80s as well as the mind behind Cyberpunk 2077 that is coming out um, later this year, soon. I think it was supposed to come out, but it's delayed because of all the craziness. Uh, but it stars Keanu Reeves in the, in the, in the, in the main role of the game, um, I think, or as one of the main characters of the game. But anyways, um, yeah, so we did a one-shot. It was super fun. Matt Lillard was playing, and Nora was playing. Uh, Luke Gygax also played. So, and some of our other friends, John Kowaleski and Glenn and all those guys. So it was a lot, it was a blast. And we did that um, during Virtual Gary Con, and you can watch that again. And then we're doing part two of that soon. We were maybe going to do it on Saturday, but think stars didn't align. And so just uh, stay tuned for a revised date of when we will be running the Cyberpunk. part two of our cyberpunk one shot so fun but yeah not a full campaign 
but really enjoying playing. Mike is an, a great game master and of course the mind behind it. It's always fun to be playing somebody's, playing a game with the person who created it. The knowledge is unreal. Um, okay, so I'm also, folks, doing kind of the leather down the back. Kind of the leather skirt, I guess, she has in the back here. She doesn't have it in the front, but she has it in the back. Kind of like a mullet. It's a bad, bad dad joke. I'm allowed those once in a while, right? Okay. Uh, oh, the question that I saw that I missed was uh, from Dina Cole, and it was, um, where is the best place to buy Vallejo paint sets online? Um, so the best place to buy Vallejo, period, is local game stores. Online, I think, um, especially right now, obviously we can't go to local game stores for the most part. Um, and so I would say, I, so if you have a local game store, um, don't maybe assume that they're not still doing some business. Local game stores are like closed. Most of them are closed to um, customers like in store, but online is available. So I called my local game store last week because we were buying a gift for Brandon, whose birthday it was, who plays snow on our on our on our stream. And our local game store, the Dragon in Milton, actually shipped out uh, some books to him. So. Check with your local game store first. See if they're shipping stuff to you. See if that's possible to get it from them. That is the best place to get Vallejo. Other than that, I'm pretty sure there is some available on, on Amazon, but I would absolutely do a search. Call your game store. If not, then Amazon is probably your best bet to check to see if it is available there instead. Um, oh, so I don't want to do that, or do I? Yeah, I'll just come right down. Just trying to see where the armor stops on her on her sleeves here. But I think it goes right down. At any rate, I'm going to make it go right down to there where it looks like it stops. And there we go. Okay, looking good. Did see some more questions there. I just want to finish off this. I think I'm going to, let me see here. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to make her her um, knee pads the dark, the darker color here. So I don't want to over, oversaturate the model with lighter, with lighter leather stuff. Okay, so that's that. Very cool. Next, I'm going to go in with um, the Heavy Sienna, which is another extra opaque paint. Again, these go are designed to go on in one, in one layer, and they do. They're wonderful, wonderful paints. Uh, Kyburn had a question I saw here. Uh, where is it? I know it was here. Thought I saw it. I can't find it. Kyburn, if you had a question that you asked, I can't locate it. Oh, here it is. Do you have color recommendation, recommendations to paint a tabaxi with fur like a Russian blue cat? That's what my tabaxi swashbuckler smoking timbers looks like. I don't actually know what a Russian blue looks like. Is it a gray color? Maybe give me a, an idea of uh, the color the skin is. Um, and then I can kind of give you a suggestion on that not a big uh, cat person so I, I don't know all of the uh, Korg K88 says hey Jason hey Korg um, are, how are you I'm well thank you uh, I'm the Ramores guy <laughs> this time I've decided to cut out the numbers of legs so are you still planning to paint the be here just got mine and i can't wait to see your take on it <laughs> that's so good i know you keep asking for this Ramores, and i painted one a while ago i recorded it and it's hard for me to go back and paint something again that i've already done uh the be here i do have something coming out uh, on the be here uh but it's not one of these live ones but maybe i'll still do a live one 
we will see. Um, but you're now you're soon you're just gonna be like, dude, just paint me a blue miniature and I'll take it from there. I apologize. Sorry, guys. We try to get to as much as we can. Uh, for me, uh, and, and also for me, I mean, I, I really want to paint what you guys want to see. It's important that, um, you know, you guys feel like you're getting the information that you need out of the show. Uh, but at the same time, too, what brings me the most joy is painting things that I actually use in my game. Um, there's just a different level of of um, motivation for me, I guess, when painting something I know I'm gonna use. Uh, and so that kind of takes priority sometimes. Um, and so I'll choose ones that I'll typically going to use. Uh, the nice thing is, is that this campaign is just a guide. Thank you for the follow. This campaign is just a guide. It's not a, well, oh, those seagulls I tell you, you know what, it's time folks. Sorry, seagulls. No more seagulls. Um, and now we're just kind of below deck, hanging out. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, where was I? It was good. Totally lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I like, I like doing things. So I'll typically do, like, you know, 60% of the minis I paint on the show are for the actual campaign that I'm running, and 40% are ones that people have requested um, or that are just really cool minis from a line. So I'm going to, yeah, I will absolutely let you know. I apologize, Corky. Um, it needs to happen. And I hope it will soon. You're probably just holding on to that remoras until... Until I, so I apologize for that. But I cannot give you a, a kind of timeline on how soon I'm gonna make that happen, unfortunately. Because I, and I don't actually even have a, a Remoraz in, in my possession right now. I have a, a couple painted ones. Maybe I'll walk through, you know, maybe next time on the show, I'll just walk through the color scheme and that might help kind of my approach to it. Maybe that can, maybe that'll be helpful. Just something, I feel bad, so something. Question, are the adventurers in Tides of Wild Mount going to possibly venture into the Underdark where they might possibly run into a Drider? Um, <laughs> that's another one people have been asking for, the Drider. Um, who knows, maybe. Um, I know, the Drider's on the list, Remoraz is on the list, Fire Giant was on the list, so last week I ran a, because it was um, Easter, I ran a rerun from our from our um fire giant tutorial at origins 2019 so i am wiping off some of that blue paint you can see on the arms and legs i'll have to retouch that up a little later um i also want to add kind of a brown belt to that inner belt she's got this inner belt on her which i'm going to also do there um but i'm gonna need a smaller brush for that so oh i also wanted to do the scabbards here i want those to be heavy sienna kind of a darker leather as well Question, does the primer that comes on the minis out of the box work well? A D&D &D uh, Rage, D&D &D Rage, it works great. Never had an issue with that. Um, that's from the D&D &D Twitch channel. Yeah, never had an issue with the primer on the minis. Um, I do find, though, that sometimes because the primer is applied and then goes into the package, that sometimes the paint tends to rub off a little bit. So you just gotta be careful while you're painting it. 
Um, but as far as a primer goes and what a primer is supposed to do, it works It works fine. Um, I've never had a problem. Every time I paint on this show, I, I, do, I, I don't do any prep on the Mini. I literally take it out of the blister five minutes before the show and, and, and paint. So, um, yeah, no, never an issue for me. Sometimes it, it clumps up, but at the price, um, and, like, you have to, like, if you want to prep your mini a little bit, you could, like, touch up some of those corners or some of those areas where it clumps or, or pulls or whatever, but it's usually okay. I haven't had any issues. I missed the, the last color change. What is the color being applied to the scabbard? That is um, Heavy Sienna, Corey. Um, I'm using that, it's an extra opaque paint. I'm using that to base coat all of the areas that I want to be kind of a darker leather color, including the scabbards um, and the knee pads and the shoulder pads. Oh, there we go. Knocking the camera here. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and bust out. I think I'm going to go ahead. You know what? I am going to go in with a larger brush. Don't know how this is going to go. Um, go ahead and bust out the larger brush for this inner belt. I don't know because it's so raised it might might go okay here but i'd just rather not take out another brush right now if i don't have to there we go that went okay there just base coating that inner belt area that's just going to give some delineation love that word I use it a lot probably too much just to delineate there it is again the different colors on the miniature the strap that goes to the the scabbard is also going to be that dark brown color And then we're gonna add some washes and that's gonna really make things pop here for us. Okay. That's that. Okay, that's the heavy brown. And then I think next we'll go ahead and do all the bone white features on here. The bone white features are going to be all of the areas. Um, she has wraps around her leg, her ankles and her wrists. So we're gonna use a uh, bone white for that. Let's see if I missed any questions here. Uh, where, there's a fire giant video out, super cool. Can't wait to check that one out. Yes, Modius, it's on, uh, you can catch it on, um, f right now you can catch it on uh, Twitch. It'll be on VOD on YouTube soon. Why Zoom over other platforms for your games? Uh, good question. Uh, Zoom's just way more stable. We used a couple other platforms, tried them. Uh, it's also free for people to, to be in involved. So just made more sense for us, for Zoom. Um, just super, super solid. It has been for us anyways. Um, okay. Now again, bone white. I'm gonna use it on all the wraps around the wrists. And ankles. There we go. 
Oh. Oh, I'll just drop the mini, no problem. No worries. Thankfully, WizKids makes these pretty strong. Very strong, actually. These are, and they're slightly bendy, so you could bend a sword like that, it's not gonna snap. Um, also, here are the ankle wraps. we're going to use and three earrings who is the model I, mini i'm using this for from again our tides of wildmount campaign is a snow leopard colored tabaxi so um we're gonna have to come in and do kind of like a white fur on her after all of this that's the last step that we will do from a base coating perspective. Either that or actually maybe we'll do the metal last, we'll see. There we go. Perfect, all right. Here we go. Wraps, um, maybe I'll come in and do, eh, I'm not gonna do metal yet. We do have some gold that we're gonna add. And some metallics, I'm gonna go do the skin. Next for the skin, we're gonna go ahead and use heavy blue gray. Heavy blue gray is an extra opaque. <laughs> this bottle's almost at the end of its life. You can see I've squeezed the heck of it, out of it over the years or the months that I've had it. Um, it's a little bit of heavy blue gray. Another quote, let me just again, scroll up here and see if there's any more cool. What is, was the streaming app you used? It's called Mimo, M-I-M-O, is the streaming software that we use for Mac. It's available only on Mac. Uh, do, you say, do you seal your minis once you are happy with the paint job? And if so, what do you, yes. Uh, back the F up, Antonio. <laughs> um, th yes, we absolutely seal them. Uh, I use a Vallejo um, matte um, varnish uh, to spray in order to seal them afterwards. Uh, it works really nicely. And, you know, you definitely want to seal them. If you don't seal your minis, folks, they will get scratched up on the table as your players are manipulating them or as you're moving them around. So you definitely want to varnish them. Uh, you can use any spray matte varnish, but like I said, the Vallejo one is my preferred one. It's really great and it's super affordable. Um, and I've heard all good things and good reviews about it from everybody that's used it. So. And they have color primers, so you can as well. So with the uh, spray varnishes, they also have, they also have a, a brush on varnish actually, matte varnish. So if you don't want to like spray, go outside and have to set up the whole kind of spray situation um, in order to use a rattle can, if it's cold outside or whatever, then you can also, for a small mini of this size, I'll often just sit down quickly at my hobby station and, and brush on the, the matte varnish. I do kind of wish I had my miniature holder for this, for this mini because my hands are cramping a little bit and I am touching it a bit too much. I might go grab it. Maybe have my son grab it real quick. One sec.
Thanks, bud. Sorry, guys. Just wanted to... Don't want to yell in your ear while I called him down to the studio. Yeah. No, no, no. no, 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 no don't throw it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. That's better. Oh, that'll save my hands. After years of painting, my hands don't take gripping small things all that great anymore. Unfortunately, that's what happens when you get old folks. All you youngins out there. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to Sirenscape here for a real quick sec. I think there's probably a gathering storm. It's kind of scary. But with three earrings at the helm, I'm not scared. Any more questions? Is there a way to show texture, e.g. the fur? Uh, Ket Matari. Um, so there are techniques you can paint fur. I wouldn't bother on this mini. Um, I don't think. Maybe I'll try. Actually, you know what? I'll try. On this one, I will try and give you some, an idea of what I would do to paint fur. Um, you know, maybe there are some funky kind of texture paints or something out there. Uh, that, that, that are available maybe, uh, but for the most part, I think it's just a matter of actually kind of like painting, kind of like stippling and, or, or pulling the paint down so that it looks fur-like to kind of give the idea of a fur texture. Um, although, in a, again, in a miniature this size, it's going to be tough to do that, but I will absolutely try just for you. Just for you, I will do that today. It's a good idea because she should look like she's got a furry tail because yes there is especially on a miniature like this where you can see that her tail is smooth does not have fur texture um, obviously on a, on a miniature that has fur and actually has a fur texture as part of the miniature like built into the mini um, dry brushing is a great way to bring out that fur texture that's for me, that's the ideal way, especially when there's a lot of texture on a mini. Now, that always works the best for me. Um, what kind of link, what kind of ink do you prefer to use on a white creature? Black, blue, white, or something else? Depends on what kind of white creature it is, Prometheus. Um, and uh, speaking of which, actually, I'd like to announce that and nobody knows this yet, but Prometheus Bound and, um, and Shadester are our new moderators. <laughs> Welcome. Um, we've been looking for moderators from the community, and those two have been very involved and very active in our chats on a weekly basis. Um, and so we're honored to have them on board. Thank you for asking the question because you reminded me. I am on to you, Prometheus. Uh, are you a moderator already? Let me just make sure that you are. I think you are. Um, pretty sure you are. Looks like you are. You got a crown, so you're, you're good. So welcome, Prometheus. And so, he's yeah, sorry. You were saying, what kind of ink do you prefer to use on a white creature? Black, blue, white, or black, blue, white, or something else? Let me know what you mean by that, Prometheus. Uh, I'd love to answer that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to, to answer that for you. So just let me know, uh, what creature, because it really depends. The ink that I'm going to use on anything really depends on the type of creature it is, the effect that I'm going for. Um, there's a lot of kind of, um, caveats to that question. So if you can kind of let me know what you're, what you're looking for, what you're looking to paint, then. I can maybe give you some of that information. Again, I'm using heavy blue-gray as a base for the white fur. And I'm getting her ears and all of that done with that color. Um, there we go. So feet, hands, and face all painted using that heavy blue-gray. I'm now going to go back in here. 
now that I'm not touching the mini anymore, which is nice. That's why a mini holder like this is good. Uh, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to just touch up the areas of the heavy blue that I rubbed off there earlier. And areas I may have overbrushed some other base colors, like on the leg here. I'm just going around the miniature. Thank you for, oh, thank you very much for the sub. Yes, Sakura, gifted subs again. Sakura's always on a gifting sub band. I love it. Thank you so much. You don't know how much that means to us, Sakura. Thank you. Again, it helps us do what we do, so really appreciate it. Awesome. Um, I, there were questions up here I missed. Um, do you have a favorite that you've painted? Um, let me... Do you have a favorite that you've painted? If so, which one? Gary Diamonds. Um, every time I'm asked this, I think the either the Beholder that I did originally that we have the tutorial uh, series on our YouTube um, channel for, or the Frost Giant that I painted. Uh, we did a three-part series on that. I think one of those two would be my favorites that I've painted. I think it's probably a tie between those two. They're both a lot of fun, and I really do love the way that they turned out in the end. Okay, next um, I'm going to do some metal and then we'll go into uh, washes. Now I do all the base coats before I do my washes. The reason I do that is because then I can really focus on, um, then I can just wash whole areas uh, of similar color, which is important. Um, Gimli says, they moved Origins back to October. Think you're going to be there again this year. Depends what weekend. I didn't even know that happened. What date? October, eh? Uh, I know it's in Columbus. I need to know what date they pushed it to, folks, because that is interesting, because I'm at another show in October, NerdarchyCon. So please let me know. Um... Question, just watched first session of Wild Mount. Do you find the new setting, which seems to be more of a high fantasy world, more challenging to run versus Dark Horror founding Curse of Strahd? That's a really great question, Modius. Um, so this is my take on it. Uh, Curse of Strahd was easier for me because it's actually closer to medieval fantasy, I think, than... Wildmount is. Wildmount is much more high seas, um, swashbuckling adventure. Whereas, you know, Curse of Strahd, yes, it's got a gothic horror bent, but it's typical kind of D&D &D gothic, uh, sorry, medieval fantasy. So um, it's actually quite different. And I actually found it easier to jump into Curse of Strahd. I'm finding it much more kind of challenging to get my brain around the world in the Menagerie Coast, I guess. Oh, these seagulls. But there's lightning out there for us, folks. It's getting scarier. We've got gunmetal. Gunmetal is going to be used for all of the little metal accents that exist across these, these weapons. So there are... Let's see. I think I'm going to go... Well, first of all, the little buckle on her belt is going to be gunmetal. Um, let's see what else here. Storms are coming. Uh, I think this sword's going to be much more kind of standard not as nice so I'm going to use metal kind of just like a steel on the end of this sword of the scabbard sorry um, there that looks like it's a wrap of some sort oh another another subscription thanks guys um,
Sakura gifting more subs, man. Or was that, maybe that was the old last time he did. But anyways, it's awesome. Either way. October 7th to 11th. Shadester, uh, yes. Um, yes, 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 yes. We, um, uh, October 7th to 11th shouldn't be an issue for us to be at Origins this year. So hopefully we can make that happen. Um, what is a tabaxi? Phoenix Wolf King asks. A tabaxi is a humanoid cat hybrid. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a cat-like creature that walks on two legs, uh, much like the Thundercats, if you remember the Thundercats. And if not, then I've just aged myself, dated myself, because it was one of my favorite cartoons when I was a kid. But anyways, yeah, it's, um, yeah, a feline humanoid in the D&D &D world. Um, so yeah, because I said this sword was kind of going to be a bit more kind of run of the mill, I'm going to make its cross guard and its blade all, well, its blade will be steel, of course, anyways, but, um, but I'm going to make the cross guard and the pommel all metal on this one and then I think I'm going to make the other one kind of gold. Make sure I get under the cross guard here and on the other side as well. There we go. But I will I'll make sure I get the inner edge of the sword. Sometimes it's hard to get these sword edges because they're so thin. You, you miss them, and then you realize afterwards, oh, man, I missed that whole sword edge. There we go. That's going to be steel, too, but then I'm going to make the cross guard and pommel gold colored. Probably like a bronze or a brass or whatever. Okay, so that is metal, metal. Um, you know what? I'm also going to make this almost like it's wire wrapped around. I'll just make it metal as well around the scabbard there. And there's pro it's probably inside here as well. I'll do that. Sometimes you got to contort these minis in all kinds of positions to get these spots. I also miss some of the leather. And because Vallejo is so great in the palette, it stays wet a lot longer, I find, than competitive paint brands I can go back to my leather armor color and just get right back in here and touch that up there um, there was another spot I really wanted to touch up but I can't remember what that was oh I'm gonna give just the grip here. So there's a little spot of grip showing between the pommel and the hand on the sword. So I just want to, there we go. Just want to highlight that. So just to separate the grip from the hand. There we go. Awesome. Okay. What I am going to do is just finish off the gold now is the last color that I need to do a base coat of. Um, let me just get down here. Oh, Snap gifted a sub. Thank you. Corey Lunch subscribed using Twitch Prime. Thank you. Um, Gimli says, well, then I'll probably see you there, Jason. I hope so. And we'll be doing, as usual, <laughs> Thundercats. Oh, I like it. Thundercats. Um, also, uh, we will probably be doing Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials live at, at Origins like we do every year. So, question, comment. Origins is still doing an Origins online June 19th to 21st in addition to... Oh, cool. Okay. That's good to know. Shadester, I'm not sure how to make you a... Hang on. 
Yeah, I don't know how... One sec here. Um, let me just take a look here. One sec, folks. Bear with me here. Um, yes, so I'm trying to figure out, Shades, or how to make you a mod. Because I want to make you a mod here, but I, I don't think that you are yet. While I'm trying to, I'm just going to text Julian here and have him do it. Maybe. Oh, I don't think he can. Okay, you're going to have to sit tight, Shadester. We'll make sure that happens. I didn't know you guys would be on tonight, which is great. But, um... There we go. I think I just modded you. Let me know, Shadester, if I just modded you. What do you use for a palette? Can you show us uh, your palette? Yes, I just use this. It's a big mess of paint. <laughs> I'm the worst at cleaning my, my palette off after every session. Uh, it's just a big, it came from like a big paint kit thing. Um, I do want to start using a uh, wet palette. That's something that I've always wanted to kind of try, but I haven't had a chance to yet. Um, so yes. Sorry, I forgot a little bone white bone white i want to create there's little um teeth i think on up here that i wanted to make there we go i want to stand out so just i'm, I'm gonna do that up there and she has a little gem around her neck i kind of wanted to make that a red color, but maybe I'll just use the brightest blue I have for now because I didn't pull a red for that. I didn't want to use red just or add red just for that little spot. Um, that wasn't something that I wanted to, to do. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make the straps behind her legs. Um, the lighter, the lighter leather color rather than that heavy sienna. Like that. There. Okay, last things, last thing to do is a little bit of glorious gold. Glorious Gold is an awesome golden color from the Game Color line. And we're going to use that for all of the gold areas. And I'm basically going to make this strap on this on her other sword. It's kind of a short sword. Almost like a curved scimitar short sword. Here, maybe it is a scimitar. It's kind of short. I'm going to call it a short sword. Looks like she's running long sword, short sword, or maybe two short swords of different make. In my game, she runs dagger, dagger, and a scimitar, I think. Can't remember offhand. I'm also going to make that little detail on her, on her chest there, gold as well, like that. Uh, and, of course, the cross guard and pommel of her short sword here. I'm also going to make that gold. I kind of want to make the cross guard on this one gold too, but I do want them to be different. Like they're mismatched. I kind of like that idea. There we go. Okay. There it is, folks. Tabaxi Rogue. Oh, 
Thank you for the follow. Saw that out of the corner of my eye. Okay, I think we're almost there. I did maybe want to make the rim around her her hood a golden color too. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm just literally going to go in. Actually, you know what? No point in doing that yet because the wash is going to mess with that. Okay, so let that gold dry. I'm going to start off with my sepia wash. This is where the magic happens, folks, or it starts to happen. Does Vallejo sell the grip that you are using to hold the mini? No, actually, that's a Games Workshop grip. To Corey, what do you use for a uh, palette? I already answered that question. Uh, with such e small work as the grip on the sword, what's important in the brush? Is it the smaller size, say zero versus a two? So yes, Kit Matari, um, size, absolutely. Um, you want the smallest brush, that's a zero. Uh, that helps a lot. What also helps in doing it is when I'm, you'll see when I'm holding and I'm doing detail work, I'm always resting my painting hand, this hand, on the miniature or on the holder to give me lots of, because if you're just coming in like this, you don't have a lot of control. You want to brace your hand on there so that you're just moving the tip of your brush, not your whole hand. That is my suggestion for that. Uh, I know pe different people will say different things, but that's my, my key for small detail work. But yes, you're going to want a zero for small details like that for the most part. At least I do. Um, I know some people would use larger ones, but they are way better painters than I am. What's in the water pot? It doesn't look like water. Uh, it is water. It's just messy. <laughs> that's all. It's just not that clean. <laughs> I am going to use my number two for the wash because I can cover a larger area in a shorter amount of time. Okay, I am going to add this wash all over. So this sepia wash that I'm using, which is my favorite wash. I've said that many times in the Vallejo line. I'm going to add a little bit of water. I'm diluting it just a touch. And I am adding it to all of my um, light leather areas. So anything that I use leather brown on, I am going to be using my sepia wash on top of that, which is most of the torso. And this will add, for those of you that are new to painting, washes add depth and shadow. Basically, uh, you, you brush it onto the miniature and then you're manipulating it so that that wash goes into the recesses. You'll see it really nicely here. It brings out that detail and settles in the recesses, adding shadow and depth. It's like my one of my favorite steps for painting a miniature is when you get to that wash phase because of what it does and how it brings that miniature to life. Got a little, little bit of something on the end of my brush here. But look at that. And that'll that'll dry really nicely. I'm gonna put it behind her legs on that leather brown I just put on there. Uh, I'm gonna paint it on the wraps, and you're gonna see here how painting it on the wraps has a completely different kind of tone now than the leather. And you can see the wraps all of a sudden look kind of like a dirty sort of um, um, aged kind of material, which I love. I do that to both, I love doing that. And that's a really cool technique, folks, for like undead, for skeletons, for example. You just paint them all a light color, like white or this bone white color. I prefer the bone white because it makes them look more aged. And then you just paint a wash over it and immediately you get all of the detail pops that you would ever want. Um, I mean, you can also do then a dry brush after that. I usually do a dry brush with a lighter color, an off-white, for example. But it's just really cool. I love how the sepia wash plays over bone white. It's really nice. There's the wrist, the wrist wraps. I also put the sepia wash over gold as well. I'm making sure not to get it on areas that I'll use the black wash because I'll use the black wash on the on all the metal, so all the steel areas. 
but you can see what it does to that gold too. Um, there we go. Yeah, I'll use the black. I'll use black wash on all the skin. So the fur, sorry, areas on this tabaxi, as well as kind of the darker um, brown leather areas. But this is great for gold and the lighter leather. There we go. And then, of course, I miss areas as I'm going through. I realize, oh, on that scabbard, I missed the whole inside edge, <laughs> the whole inside, in, the inside part of the end of the scabbard there, the metal. Touching up some blue here that I messed up earlier. And that's the nice thing about this stage is you can go through, as you're adding a wash, you can kind of figure out what you missed along the way. Okay. Good stuff. I am not in the chat, folks. I'm focusing here. Um, question. What is the Shadowfell and the Feywild? Those are great questions, Phoenix King. You always give me the deepest questions. Shadowfell and the Feywild are uh, demi-planes, kind of. Um, and so they're planes that, that exists just over the prime material plane. The material plane is the plane that uh, most D&D worlds exist in. The Feywild is just on the outside, almost like the, un the upside down in Stranger Things. Uh, the Feywild is where the Fey live, and, and Shadowfell is where there are shadow creatures and, and a bunch of other things. It's kind of like the upside down. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, how often do you do weathering effects? Um... Good question. On these char on characters like this, not a lot. Um, sometimes I will. So, like, if there's a cloak or something, like a sweeping cloak, I'll often, like, add uh, dust and dirt to the bottom of it. Weathering effects usually happen more so on vehicles. Um, like the ship that I did, the Falling Star, I did a bunch of weathering effects on that, on the hull. Folks, you can see how when that wash is drying, how cool that looks. It's looking very cool. Really happy so far with the way this is turning out. We're gonna move on to the black wash. Black wash, I am going to dilute a touch. These washes do run thick, which is good because you can always dilute a wash. You can't always make it thicker. So I like that Vallejo has a thicker wash, but I do dilute it with some water so that I can control it. I'm gonna go in and do all of the blue with that wash, all of the metal and all of the dark brown areas as well. Then, very carefully, I'm also going to do the fur with that black wash as well. So all these dark leather so all the areas here, like this whole scabbard will get a wash. We'll get a black wash. Get it off the tail for now because I don't quite want it on there yet. I want to be able to control it when it gets on there. But all this blue. And this will add that shadow to the blue, and then we can come back in and lighten it with that magic blue that we've got. I do obviously want to also put it into or onto these leather areas. Bring out those. It's going to darken it all significantly, folks. But that's good. That's what we want. We want it to darken the dark. We want it to darken it, and then we're able to kind of work up that those highlights after. I'll get back to questions in just a sec. Just want to lay down some of this. OK. 
Okay. I think all my blue areas have sufficient wash on them, except for the hood. So the hood, I'm just gonna go through, add this wash into the ears. Now I'm gonna get into some of the fur here. Onto the shoulder pads. But you can see this is when the details in the face are really gonna start to pop. see how that wash really brings out those details and that texture. So I'll make sure it's kind of evenly placed, that it's not pooling too much. If a wash pools too much, it'll actually clog detail, especially on a small mini this size. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, we want to get the hands here. And um, also want to get the blades. So everything that's steel. Perfect. And again, you know, I've said it many times, but the washes are really forgiving when it comes to, you know, covering up some of those missed areas that may have been missed in recesses. So in the kind of the deepest areas and nooks and crannies of a mini, this wash will kind of seep into those areas and, and cover those. It's also good for delineation. So for example, on this buckle, I made sure that I painted a little bit outside of the buckle as well to separate it from the rest of what was going on around it. Uh, last thing I have to do is the feet and the last few things are the feet that are just peeking out from under these wraps and the tail. Now this tail I'm gonna end up just painting over again, but this just gives it a little bit of depth. Uh, there's not really any texture to the tail to, to give for the wash to really make a big difference, but it's just that, you know, closer to where it connects to the body, can make it a little, darken it a little bit, and then, you know, it's not gonna be a perfect kind of smooth area, so this will just give it help to um, differentiate it a bit, give it a bit of texture. Okay, those are all the washes, just like that. You can see how the detail is really starting to come through, like that. And it always looks a little messy, folks, with the washes on it, but don't worry about that. Okay, let me go back on to, while those washes are drying a little bit, let me, let me go back into some of these questions here. Um, not seeing any just yet. Question, what are the main steps for painting a mini? Uh, those, that's a great, I, that's a great question. That's a big, big question. Um, I would say the big steps that I would take is base coats, washes, highlights, varnishing. <laughs> I think those are the kind of the, the big, if you're looking at overarching steps, I usually base coat most of the mini, if not all of it. Then I do uh, washes and then I'll work up highlights from there. Now that's a very simplified question for that, but yeah, those are the main steps. Question, what is your favorite class race combo to play? Um, I'm really enjoying my gold dragonborn monk right now. Uh, that is my favorite currently. Do you ever use the layering method? Very thin down paints, layer after layer. I have Kit Mutari. I don't have the patience for that, um, really, especially for um, 
especially for minis like this, well, this is a NPC that will be showing up in a number of different sessions. So I would take a little bit more care with her than I would uh, most others. But for the most part, no. For the most part, I just enjoy, um, I really just enjoy, you know, d the simplified version, which is what I teach in these tutorials, um, just to get it kind of through. I'm gonna use my zero brush go in and I'm going to mix a little bit of my heavy blue with magic blue. Magic blue is a lighter blue color and I'm just going to mix a little of that in to some heavy blue to start creating my highlights. Um, I could dry brush but on a on a miniature this size it's difficult often to get that dry brush effect that you want. So I'm going to go in and just start following the contours of the folds with this kind of 50-50 mix of the Magic blue and heavy blue. And if there are areas, folks, that you can't get to, like you can see I'm actually following some of the folds that exist on the miniature already. And if there's areas you can't get to with a brush, then maybe those areas should be in shadow and therefore not painted on. There you go. And you can see how I've already lightened up that, that leg there. And I'm going to use this 50-50 mix in this way across all of the blue areas to add to add my highlights. like that. Just making sure to leave the, the darkened, kind of washed, heavy blue in the recesses because you definitely want to create that differentiation between the light, light areas and the dark areas. And you can see on the pants what I'm doing there. You know, I've, I've said it a number of times on, on the stream, but you know, with D&D &D minis, when you're painting most creatures in the, in the WizKids line, you know, you're going to be using those minis maybe, maybe once or twice a year. If, unless it's like a goblin and you have a heavy goblin kind of campaign. But even then, you know, you, I base what I'm going to paint and how much time I'm going to spend on it on value of that creature character at the table. So for example, this character, instead of painting two miniatures at a time, kind of batch painting, which I would typically would do on this show, um, I've decided to not do that. I've decided to paint one because I want to spend a little bit more time and effort on her because she's going to be an ongoing kind of NPC, reoccurring NPC, as long as the players don't kill her um, <laughs> for whatever reason. And um, and so she'll be, you know, she'll be there for the next little bit at least. I'm at least going to get a number of sessions out of her. And, you know, a tabaxi kind of character can appear, you know, I can use this miniature for another character at some point. So, um, you know, I've decided to spend a little bit more time on her. But even still, two hours isn't a crazy amount of time to spend on a miniature. If you can get a, a, a mini in two hours, that's pretty great from a you know, time spent sort of scenario. Um, the Harshanay character, the uh, frost giant that I painted on stream that was based on the Harshanay miniature from Storm King's Thunder, I spent uh, three sessions on him. That would have been two, four, six hours on him because, again, he was a reoccurring NPC, traveled with the PCs, so I wanted to spend a bit more time on that. Anyway, so that's the blue. That's the first kind of level of detail and highlight I've used. I've just followed the contours, even on the back of the hood. Up close doesn't look so great, um, but you know, remember too, the one to two foot rule is the distance that players will be seeing this miniature from. So I'm not too worried about it looking amazing up really close. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Magic Blue all on its own and I'm just focusing on the highest kind of level of detail that would catch the most light. 
So all of the high folds, the crown of the head, you know, just basically thin lines along the major folds along the edge here. Along the front, I am going to add that gold kind of border here, but there we go. There. On here, I'm going to focus again on the top area, so I'm just going to basically on the peaks. And probably only on the top of the miniature, because I imagine the light is coming straight down as if she's on a ship deck and the sun is what's lighting this miniature. So I'm just going to do three little hashes on this side. Definitely get her elbow, because that will be the most in the light. All the peaks. Already done that one. And then also on the leg here, going to catch, again, the folds that are facing the sun the most. On the front here, this one kind of stands out. Give a little bit of that one on this, maybe a little there. And then on the front of the pants, all I'm going to do is do a line kind of down the center. Because that is the highest spot treating it like almost like a cylinder as a leg. So there would be a line at the top. And then I'm going to get this little seam on the side of the pants and then just the top of these little folds. There's three on the side and the folds across, across the crotch and the pants there. Um, I'll also give it a bit of a, there we go. You can see that blue really starting to come to life. It's looking, you know, 3D. Um, and then I'm actually going to take it even one step further than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of bone white that's still wet. I'm going to mix that 50-50 with my, with my magic blue. And now I'm just going to do basically like almost like pinpoints. So little lines and pinpoints of where the, the light would hit the most. So basically in this crease here, there would be a little bit there. Back here on this crease, up here on this one, over here on this one. I'm just basically almost doing just dots and that will be the final kind of highlight on the very highest points. Just like that. So I'm either doing a line or a dot based on the on the on the shape of the area that I'm actually painting. That's it. I am gonna take that lighter kind of color and paint this little gem in here. I might go back and paint it right after, but I just wanted it blue for now. Little gem in the middle of her chest there. Okay, and there we go. That is the blue done. Let's see how close I can get to the camera here. There we go. And this is even more detail, like I said, than I do for most of most of the minis that I paint on the show. See if there are any other questions here. Kyburn says, if you weren't doing a live stream, how long do you think it would take to paint this mini? I find myself rewatching later and pausing you constantly. <laughs> um, honestly, two hours. I wouldn't have spent any more time than this on this miniature. 
Uh, maybe on the base, you know, I'll go back and and I have these new cool grass tufts from Vallejo that I'll, I'll take advantage of on here in the middle. Um, I'll make the base kind of like a light, rocky kind of texture, which would be fun, but I honestly wouldn't spend much more time than that. Um, when are you going to be in Florida? Good question, no snap dad. I'm not sure, but I will let you know if we get out there. For sure. How useful do you think that mini holder thing is? And there is a technical term for it. <laughs> and mini holder is what I call it. Uh, it's incredibly useful because I don't touch the miniature, so I'm not wiping paint off it. Uh, it saves my hand from cramping, from holding something too small. Um, so they're very, very useful. What app are you using on the phone to live stream like this? Uh, it's not on the phone, Big Dad. Uh, it's on my Mac, and it's called Mimo. Mimo Live is what I'm using right now to, uh, to do that. I'm just trying to catch up with all the questions here before I move on. Because uh, I only have half hour left. What is your main tip for highlighting? Um, if you want great highlights, more subtle changes. So mixing colors into... So there I mixed, you know, magic blue into, into heavy blue until I was full magic blue. And then tipped... Uh, and then a little bit of bone white to bring it up a little further. So subtle, multiple layers is the, is the key to highlighting for me. Um, do you ever use any dry brushing? All the time. Uh, Abel or Adabel Rosette. Um, yeah, I use it all the time. Uh, on many previous episodes, you can see them all on youtube.com slash realmsmith or slash D&D. And uh, we use it quite often. I won't be using any tonight, though. Uh, back to brushes. Any reason for 000 or smaller brush size? Not really. Ketmatari with a zero, I can do eyes. Um, and so, yeah, I don't think so. Not for me anyways. Uh, I don't think I missed any questions on the... How do you get these highlights to blend into the base wash rather than look like color blocks? Uh, fading the edges. Um, the way I do that is subtle, like I said, changes. So mix some of that base color into the highlight color. So a light color into a dark color in 50-50 and then full and smaller areas. So the line that I use for my mid is like this, and then if when I add a lighter color to it, I do it a little bit smaller, do another line, smaller, another line. And that will create that kind of feathered, blended effect. I don't know if I've missed, if I've missed questions from you guys, please re-ask them um, if time passes and I haven't asked them yet. But I am all caught up. Turbo speed for half hour left here. Okay. Um, what do I want to do? I'm going to do skin now, I think. Um, but before I do that, yeah, before I do that, folks, I'm going to go in with Rosy Flesh is another game color color. You can imagine where this is going to go. If anybody can guess it, you win my respect. Um, and yes, that's a good point, Gimli says. If you, if you use a brush that's too small, the paint will dry faster on that brush. And that is, that is true. The nose! That is right! Fading the edges. Um, the nose and inside the ears. So, with a zero brush... I have a rogue hair on this um, zero. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to... Boop! Her nose, like that. And that just gives me a reference as to where that nose is going to be so I don't mess it up later. And I'm going to paint a little bit of this into the ear, which is difficult to do at this stage. But I'm going to do it, and then I'm probably going to have to touch it up after. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to touch it up. And I'm going to have to add a wash in there. But I just want her ears to be a little lighter as well. So we'll let that dry, and then we're going to go ahead now and mix 50-50 um, of off-white and heavy blue-gray. Heavy blue-gray is what we used for the base color on the for, the, for the fur. So we're just gonna go right in here and mix 50-50 of that, and that is gonna be my next color step for highlights for, for the fur. Now, we talked about what to do with for fur. I'm gonna try this on the tail. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do little lines of... I'm basically trying to create a fur texture on the tail without 
Now for this, because it's only my my mid tone, um, I'm not too worried about it being too blotchy because I don't want it to be too um, stark when I go to my light color. But that starts the process. You can see that looks kind of like fur a little bit. Um, but I'm doing thicker lines down but I'm not doing like a solid, a full solid kind of pass on this. I want to kind of feather in the texture as I go, like that. Kind of a bit like fur. And then when I come in with off-white, then it will really kind of, you know, that, that's where I'll, I'll try and take it even finer. Um, and then of course I have to put my dots on here as well because it is like a slow snow tiger so okay so that's a decent start for fur and that's probably the only place I'm going to be able to do that for texture at all because frankly anywhere else is just going to be too small um, but I am going to so here I'm on the palm of the hand fingers and this is where this this zero brush really comes in handy because I just want to get want to make sure I delineate these fingers that as much as possible and I don't really have a good angle where I can kind of use the edge of my brush to run alongside them so um, now for the toes again same thing kind of pick out the knuckle on these toes because there isn't much else that I can see here. Uh, there's a little bit of the side of the foot, not much. This is always fun. Okay, like that. Now on her face, we're gonna take a little extra care here. Now I'm gonna hit her brows. I don't know, I have this little hair on the end of this brush. It's driving me nuts. So I'm gonna hit the brows, bridge of the nose, cheeks, like that. You can see how that's really starting to come I'm out here. She's so cute. Don't tell her that though. She'll kick your kick your butt. Like that. Now I'm trying to get the side of her, of her nose or her mouth here. It's not really a snout, I guess. I don't know what you call it necessarily, but I just want to get her chin. Like that. And there it is. That's the beginning. So chin, leave the rest kind of dark under there. And then her neck as well, just kind of the front of her neck, but leaving the side dark where it goes into her hood. There we go. Perfect. Oh, another sub. Thank you. Jeez, you guys. You guys are awesome. Sorry, just putting it a little closer to my face just so I can see what's going on here. There. 
Okay, so that's the first kind of level of, of highlights. Now I'm going to go almost straight off white with just a touch of with just a touch of heavy blue gray in it. For this, there's a big chunk of something there. Okay. For this, I'm just going to hit her cheeks and this is an even smaller area, so you're leaving that last highlight in kind of the recesses. to try and get this little hair on the, there we go. I think I got it. I think I got it. Nope. <laughs> got a little rogue hair here that's stuck right in this brush and there, there it goes. Okay. Um, so I'm hitting the cheeks, the brow, nose again. And I'm just going smaller and smaller with these highlights. Thinner and thinner. Just on the edge of the mouth. And then just down the center of the neck there. There we go. Good. Okay. And that's probably as bright as I'm going to go because I want to do her eyes, but I want to make sure that her eyes feel lighter. So pure off-white as opposed to the rest of the rest of the areas that are, that are fur um, so that it sticks out. On her paws, I'm going to go across her knuckles with that lighter mix. Like that. Um, toes, of course. Again, we want this to look like a, a snow leopard, so mostly white tabaxi. And now, on the tail, I'm going to try and do even smaller kind of fur lines. Now, hopefully, I can get a find enough tip on this on this brush here but let's see this one brush is giving me a little bit of problems here there There we go. And I'm just doing little, little strokes. Trying to anyways. Not super easy, not the easiest thing to do. Little strokes here. There we go. That's your tail. Now, as a snow leopard kind of tabaxi, I might come back and, well, I was gonna do the circles on her tail, but I might just do the lines, like straight kind of lines across, I think, and some dots on her forehead um, to give her that look. I did forget the back of her ears, actually. So I just want to come in there and make sure those are nice light gray, like that. And then I want to come back in and make sure that the edges on her ears are, I might not do a wash in there after all, but I want the edges on her ears to be gray as well. Look at that. There we go. 
Good, good. It's working out. Might as well go in and do our eyes now that our face is done. So we're going to get pure off-white. 15 minutes. Sorry, folks, I'm not looking at questions right now just because I want to make sure I get this done. So we're doing that there. She's got these big, big feline eyes. So it's a little easier than just regular human characters. Went a little too big on that one, but that's okay. I can close it in after. Um, sorry if I'm off camera a bit. I just want to make sure I get it right. Okay, there we go. And then I think I was going to use maybe a blue for her pupil. I'm going to try a heavy blue for her pupil just to see if that's going to actually have wet heavy blue still. Just to see if that's going to be dark enough. Uh, I don't want to use, I don't have black. Um, cold gray is kind of the darkest color I have. So maybe, but a heavy blue I think will be nicer. Let's see here. Still have that hair. That hair just does not want to let go. Oh, I think I finally got it. Basically, I'm just going to dot the eye in the middle, like that. And on the other side, again, you can see how I'm, how I'm making sure that I um, brace my hand there for detail work. Uh, and I'm going to come back now, because I rarely get both eyes perfect first time. It's very rare, actually. <laughs> uh, very rare. So then I'll come back in and I'll add a little bit more white on the other side of her eye. A little too much. Come back in again. And then you just kind of go back and forth until you have it right. That's better. And then... Just with a little bit, oh, seagulls are back. A little bit of black wash, just in the in the just in the recess there to close it in. Those will do. They're not perfect, but they'll do. Okay. Um, now, just to highlight the uh, leather areas, the lighter leather areas, I'm actually going to mix in, I think I'm going to mix, mix in a little rosy flesh into the heavy, the heavy sienna in order to do that. Um, I was going to use leather brown, but I want it to be a bit more of a um, kind of a, a tan color. I usually use tan for the darker leather areas. Today I'm going to use a little bit of rosy flesh because I don't have that area and I don't want it to add off white or uh, or bone white because it's not going to have the, the same kind of warmth that rosy flesh will. So now I'm just going to go in and, and paint kind of lines and just highlight the edges of some of this armor here like that. Now I can use the edge of my brush because these stand out quite a bit that there we go use it on the edge of armor there the edge of this knee pad the bottom edge because that would catch the light too a little bit and then just a little highlight on the on the top of the knee pad there. Like that. Uh, I'll, I'm going to do a line on the top of the scabbard here because that would have like a, a highlight line. And also do a line kind of on this side of the scabbard. 
and on the top end here because I would catch the light. And to the top of the belt that runs kind of along her midsection. There we go. There we go. Very cool. And then I'm also going to come in with some off white here to highlight. Um, these two teeth kind of tusks that are on, that she wears around her neck here, or on her armor, rather, like that. And then uh, finally, I'm gonna grab some of that gold again, which is still wet. And I'm gonna do that little kind of trim of, of gold around her hood. Being really careful not to hit that fur that we spent so much time trying to get perfect on her face. So you just wanna be really careful. But this gold trim will kind of add a little bit of kind of a regal, captain-y, sort of look around here. There we go. Okay. All right, then, what is a snow leopard without its spots? So we're gonna go ahead and add those spots um along the tail because that would again that is the, the only spot it would actually be evident before we do that though i'm just going to literally get into the the gun metal again just because the black wash really kind of the black wash really brought down the sheen on the on these swords so we're just going to run them along the edge you can see how that really brings out that edge we're gonna go into turbo mode now because we've got eight minutes left here. It was nice to spend extra time on a single mini. I do this more. There we go. And then finally, the detail, I'm gonna use cold gray, which is a bit of a darker kind of gray. Oh, it's not quite the gray I thought it was. So, I'm just gonna mix some uh, black wash into some heavy blue gray because I didn't realize I actually got the wrong gray. I wanted a different one. It's okay. I love, you know, I don't mind these little oversights because then I can kind of deal with them in, in stream. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm just stippling on uh, stripes along the table. Now I know a snow leopard doesn't have stripes, but that's okay. Uh, and I'll probably have to go in here again with a black in the middle here to really bring out these, these markings. But just gonna see if I stipple them, they look a bit more natural. Yeah, I'll need to black. I was gonna add black to the, and I'm gonna do black on the end of the tail too. But if you put a little line of black in the middle of this, it'll look really nice. And that is the tail there. There we go. That is a wrap on the Tabaxi Rogue, folks. Let's see if we can get a final look on this. And then, of course, her base is super easy. A little leather brown, some sepia wash. And she'll have a cool kind of sandy, rocky base. But that is a Tabaxi Rogue in two hours. 
Thank you so much, as usual, folks, for making us your preferred uh, entertainment experience for the apocalypse during this crazy time. Uh, I know I missed questions, guys. Um, definitely come back if you have questions still. And I've seen all these uh, questions come by in the chat. Can you please write down those questions? And you can ask them either in the break on Monday night or you can ask them on Tuesday in behind the screen um, where I have a whole hour of Q&A um, on Twitch at 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific. Again, tomorrow night, uh, Tides of Wild Mount campaign. That happens at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific episode, I want to say three. I think it's three. Pretty sure it's episode three um, or four. Oh, gosh. I'm not even sure. <laughs> it's horrible. Everything just kind of blends together right now as we're kind of self-isolating. But anyway, make sure that you join us. It'll be a blast. Uh, last time we had Matthew Lillard on, we'll have a guest next. Not this coming show, but the next show we'll have another guest. Um, and we're just enjoying it so much. We'll see you guys again. Be safe. Take care of each other. And you guys have a good night. Bye.